so just a quick introduction. I'm Abby Strong. I uh, run uh, product and solutions marketing here at Extreme, otherwise known as the one paying for this. So I will keep this short and sweet. Um, <laughs> and uh, just give you a quick overview of where we're going and what our vision is. And then we're going to bring in all of our tech folks to give you a deeper dive into, into what's happening in Extreme. So the first thing is just setting it up a little bit for how we see what the past is. I mean, I hope a lot of our offices don't look like this anymore, but there could be a few out there. But the point is, what we, where we came from not too many years ago, right, was a lot of limited insights, inflexible infrastructure, uh, inconsistent experiences, right? Coming in, you're connected to the Wi-Fi, you're connected to the wire, you might have a different way of getting the credentials to do that. Um, and restricted mobility. Some things work here, some things don't work there. But there's a better, better way coming, right? And so as we start to look at what's happened in the market, even in the past couple years, we're looking at things like, you know, there's 10 times as many devices as there are people in the world now. Um, and I know, you know, I'm an example of this at the moment. I think I've got three attached to me in some form at the moment. Um, but uh, over 5 billion mobile users, we've got over $2 trillion being spent for digital transformation. And really, what does that mean? It means nothing and everything, right? Digital transformation is really the idea of technology and policy coming together to create a new experience. And that's what we've been focused on here at Extreme, is how can we create new experiences for our users and for the users that interact with them? And so we see a future filled with intelligence, with IoT, with secure guest experiences, as you guys all just experienced, um, and anywhere, everywhere access for all of these different things. And the way that we're going to have to do that is first, we want to get there, right? Well, we know there's some challenges ahead. The challenges are stuck with the fact that we have disparate systems, we have increased threats. You guys are going to get a little peek into, into how we want to address that later. Congested networks. And of course, complex policy management. Because that's really what it comes down to, if we can acknowledge it all as technical folk in the room, is that if it gets too hard, people stop doing it, right? Oh, it's easier to go around than it is to actually make it work properly. So what are the game changers? This is where we've been focusing all of our time and attention. We need to be able to integrate technology and business objectives. That's that digital transformation that we were just talking about. We need to have real-time visibility and control and the ability to interact and react to situations without having to manually do it every single time. That takes machine learning and AI. And no matter how skeptical you are, I know there's lots of field day delegates that I have interacted with in the past. It was a long time where we weren't allowed to use the word cloud. Um, now we'll say it, cloud, 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 all of the time, right? Same thing with ML and AI. No matter how you define it, it is coming, right? We are already using it in lots of different applications. We've got some demos for you today of how this is, how this is actually changing the game for us in technology. Um, and then the automated policy enforcement. There's only so many of us. There's a lot more things. We were just talking about that. So it isn't just about how can I make the network do these things. It's how can I make them do it automatically. And that was what we talked about a little bit in the last time that we were presenting at Network Field Day. But now we have put this together in this cohesive vision of the autonomous network. This is something that we introduced back in May at our user conference, is our vision of what it looks like to be a fully autonomous network. And it's a combination of automation, insights, infrastructure, and ecosystems. And when you put these things together and you put them in the wrapper of machine learning, artificial intelligence, and security, we start to predict a brand new future for our users. Things like, oh, we, we've seen that problem before. We've already fixed it in this upcoming version or, or this ver available version of, of the OS. We recommend you update it. Or, hey, we've seen this client issue before. We know it's a driver issue. We've seen it you know, 100,000 times that are in our database. Upgrade your driver, right? Things like that. So being able to use the insights that we can collect about the network and automatically recommend them to you or even automatically do it. I know we demonstrated that back in February, but um, the last network field day, we can say, you know what? It's not enough just to learn how we should be reacting, but if we see something that isn't reacting the way that it should, automatically take a pack packet capture, quarantine it, tell me you did it, and then you can figure it out later after it's done. Um, so that's something that's important to us. That brings us to this new world, because all of this is wrapped 
in our vision of cloud. The only way to get to that, of that level of learning and that level of artificial intelligence is to start having a lot more data to work with. And that's what Sham's gonna talk us through in a couple minutes. Um, but it takes more than a million devices, 10 million clients. This is just our daily statistics. We're gonna show you this in real time. Um, but over a million insights per second that we're collecting right now in order to start building you this vision of the autonomous network. And we are gonna wrap this around the industry's first cloud-driven end-to-end enterprise solution. All the way from the edge, the access points and the switches, into the campus and up to the, the enterprise data center. So this combination of uh, the, the breadth of the portfolio wrapped in, uh, underneath our cloud is what's going to make this autonomous network a reality. And take a look at what our portfolio looks like from the extreme side. So this is our vision of what we're, where we're going right now. We have a combination of wireless, switching, and routing hardware. We are going to give you the most flexible cloud in the market. Right? It is, it is, cloud is an architecture. And we're going to talk through that in a couple of things in a couple minutes. But um, the important piece to take away here is that cloud is a way to implement. It is a, it, um, our third generation microservices architecture gives us a way to create a fully scalable, redundant, resilient deployment of cloud. But it doesn't always mean that you have to buy it as a public service because we're hosting it for our customers. You can consume it that way. That's a way to consume it. That's a public cloud service. You can consume it in your own private cloud, in your own data center, in your own AWS, in your own GCP. Um, or you can stick it in a local cloud if you want. Now, there will be varying degrees of how much access you have to that machine learning and AI as you start to contain the, the, the data that you have access to but we have that most flexible deployment in the market. And then we start supplementing it with these, these components of the autonomous network, security and access control, automation, insights and analytics, management and orchestration, and we do recognize that we're not gonna make everything here at Extreme. And so this is something that we're really focused on, I just wanna to touch on for a second, is this open ecosystem. And in fact, we've just demonstrated that with our um, our recent announcement, we moved uh, a software package that we had for a long time, Stackstorm, and we talked to you about that at the last network field day. We've just moved that to the Linux Foundation because we do believe in open source and we do believe in being open, and we want to make sure that, that we reiterate that in everything that we do here at Extreme. I've got a question for you on that point. Uh, are sure. you guys doing any work on disaggregated networking and looking at Brocade's operating systems going on commodity switching? Is that on the radar? There are lots of things on the radar that we would love to talk to you about, but um, I think Prasad is here somewhere in the back, yeah? Yeah, so we do have, um, so we, we do have uh, a strategy around disaggregated operating systems. Um, we call it the white box initiative. We are working with select customers uh, on that uh, effort. It's not available broadly or generally to all our customers. Okay. So uh, we, we do have that uh, in our portfolio. Yeah, can I ask which uh, which ASICs, which boards that you're were you looking at? Uh, uh, Broadcom, Mellanoc? Yeah, it's uh, Broadcom based right now, but we do have uh, plans to go with another okay. alternate uh, are you, are you, vendor as well. Uh, Qumran family at all? Um, don't want to go into that level of specificity okay, no right problem. now. Yeah. Short answer is yes, though. Okay. <laughs> um, all right, but this is how we see our portfolio fitting together. And if you were watching any of our public announcements, it's okay if you weren't, but I know everybody follows these very closely, is that we did introduce, um, we did introduce our extreme elements uh, earlier this year also. And you may note that these categories match up to all of the elements that we have in our portfolio. So very quickly, I'm going to touch on the cloud because I mentioned that cloud is an architecture and that that's what we really focus on, why we acquired Aerohive is for this cloud architecture. So if we look at the market today, there's a, a set of cloud architectures that are out there that we like to call first and second generation. First generation cloud was really, I stuck it in a VMware and I'm not sitting next to it anymore, right? But it did give you a different way to consume software, right? And it started to add things like flexibility and cost savings. This was when we used to say anything that wasn't next to me is the cloud, right? And I think where some of the skepticism started to come in. And then we started to see second generation clouds pop up. Now, we, now there's true multi-tenancy 
This is when all of the Hadoop and HBase stuff started to come out, and everybody was like, yes, big data, this is changing the world, right? And it was. We had real big data, big, I'm sorry, big data with multi-tenancy capabilities, and then microservices architectures. But the problem is with both of these is that they become very limiting very quickly because they couldn't, they couldn't actually scale, and when you had run out of the scale or the, the capabilities, then you, would, you wouldn't have the ability to take, hey, I need a different region or I need a different region. How do you start combining the data from those different regions together, right? So if you stick in the second generation, the problem there becomes you either run it all in the same place or you end up with disparate sets of data that aren't combined together. So that brings us to the third generation. This is uh, in the, just in the last few years where we started to see these third gen clouds pop up. And this is not only built, of course you get microservices and multi-tenancy and all of these capabilities, but you also start to think, see things like continuous innovation, continuous, continuous integration, continuous delivery. Innovation's probably also, right? Um, serverless computing, zero downtime upgrades, the, um, you know, what do we say, the seven nines of, of uptime, um, but really focused on that ability to start integrating true machine learning and artificial intelligence to solve problems. And then the important piece is that there's only a couple cloud vendors, you're looking at one of them, that have this ability in the market today. But we won't be stopping there. The next thing that we're gonna do is focus on what's that fourth gen look like? What does it mean when we start saying the most important thing is not just uptime anymore or zero downtime upgrades, but it starts to become about durability. Something like, hey, if I have a database of 10,000 objects, only once in 10 million years would I miss updating a single bit, a single bit in that database. Um, so that's something that becomes very, very important as you're doing all of these real-time upgrades and the real-time innovation is, can I depend on that service to be up and that I'm not gonna end up with any kind of corruption in it? So that's where we're focusing as we move into that fourth gen and Sham's gonna go through this from an architecture level for you.